Hello everyone, this is David again. Um, for this podcast, I'm going to be doing a short overview on how to take a history and physical. The point of this, um, since we're in the MBS class, is really to just start to think about how a medical student or physician goes about a patient encounter. And um, the other reason we're doing this is because a lot of our small group cases are going to be um, based off of uh, a patient case and presentation. So we want you guys to be able to think through and um, you know know the basic overview uh, on uh, what a history and physical is all about. So like I just talked about, what we're going to do is uh, quickly go over the thought process behind taking a, a history, what uh, really um, a, a physical exam means, and then uh, I, I kind of threw in a case in between all this to show um, how the different aspects will fit together. Um, a lot of things I, I added to this presentation you don't really need to focus on. I just included it if you felt like going back and, and Googling some of the medical jargon. So overview of a patient history. Every time you walk into a patient room, especially if it's a new patient, um, you're going to go through all of these things. You're going to look for the chief complaint you're going to get a history of present illness, aka an HPI. You're going to um, ask about a review of systems. You're going to get the past medical history, the surgical history, their social history, what medicines they're on, new medicines, allergies, and uh, family histories. So what exactly is a chief complaint? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a the overarching symptom or complaint as told by the patient. Okay, so it's not something that you say. It's, it's, um, it's what the patient complains of. Now, the interesting thing is that most patients will have multiple symptoms, complaints, or questions. So it's your job to ask what is most pressing at this time, what's bothering you the most, and that is the chief complaint. All right, so I have an example here, and it's not really for us to, to go through um, that much in detail, but just so you have an idea of what, what a chief complaint is, and this case will come up throughout the presentation, but a 50-year-old male with a known history of COPD, which is a lung disorder, and uh, a history of smoking presents to the ER because he can't catch his breath. Okay, so the rest is irrelevant right now, but the chief complaint is going to be shortness of breath, um, dyspnea, something to that extent. So say you're in the emergency room uh, with this patient who has some shortness of breath, what exactly are you going to ask him? You know, th there's actually a, a method to the madness um, behind uh, a, a patient encounter and, and what makes a physician seem so intelligent and like they know what they're doing, it's because they're following this every single time. Okay, so an HPI enables a provider to obtain a detailed history of a patient's symptoms. You will always ask these questions. All right, so the mnemonic is old charts, or um, I've seen old carts without the H in there, but, but this is what I use. So onset, when did this first start? Location, where is the pain or discomfort or what's bothering them? The duration, how long has it been going on? Does it come and go? Which you'll see also is, is kind of relating to the temporal pattern down um, further down. The characteristics, um, ask them to describe the pain. Is it sharp? Is it shooting, burning, pressure, pain, numbness, tingling, anything like that? And sometimes you have to help them along because they don't necessarily know the words to describe the symptoms. Um, alleviating and aggravating factors, what makes the pain better? What makes it worse? If they have chest pain, does sitting down help the pain go away? Does, does the pain come on when they're exercising? Those are some of the examples. Radiation, is it radiating down their arm? Is it going straight through to the back? Is it going to the shoulder or down to the foot? All of these are very uh, common questions and presentations of different um, diseases that you'll eventually know. And the last thing is severity. So there's a Likert scale, 0 to 10. How bad is your pain, with 10 being the worst? Um, that's not necessarily the most important, but it's something to ask because if they say, 10 out of 10, then obviously they're in distress. Another way you can ask it is, have you ever had pain like this in the past? So moving on, uh, past medical history, that's exactly what it sounds like. What conditions do they have or what have they had that they've been treated and cured of? Um, so that's the first two. 
another thing to keep in mind is that if a patient uh, is, is being treated for a disease and they feel like they're healthy and, and they're asymptomatic, then they might not tell you. So it's important to look through the drugs, which you'll see in a second, and, uh, and, and ask about why they're on a certain medication, because that's really the, the best way to tell what the past medical history is. Past surgical history, that's what it sounds like. You wanna um, ask them what surgeries they've had. You can go through and say, do you have your appendix? Do you have your gallbladder? Because sometimes patient, patients forget. Another thing is to just, when you do the physical exam, to look for any clues, like a scar. Social his, uh, history, uh, are they smoking? How much do they smoke? Same thing with alcohol and illicit drugs. Their home life, do they feel safe at home? What's their occupation or career? Um, sexual history, I didn't include, but that's important also. Family history, you wanna ask um, mostly about siblings and parents. If there's something that seems like it's a genetic disorder, then you can go and get further information to help make one of those uh, trees. Uh, you also want to ask about medications. Um, have they recently started new medications? Has uh, another doctor changed their dose? Or have they discontinued any medications, whether they were told to or not? Um, sometimes patients stop taking meds because they feel well. You also want to get dosing information. Okay. Allergies. Not only do you want to just ask for allergies, but you want to ask what happened to them, what the reaction was. Did they get a rash? Was Did they go into anaphylactic shock? Because there's a very big difference between the two. And uh, vaccinations, because like the patient with COPD, there are certain vaccine, vaccines and, and shots that they need that um, a healthy person of the same age would not. And of course, when you're, when you're doing a pediatric rotation or dealing with a kid, you wanna make sure they're up to date, especially with all the stuff going on now with measles. The other thing you're gonna do is, is get a review of systems. And I'm not gonna go through all of these, but if someone um, complains, uh, say, of a headache, you're not only gonna get the HPI, you're also gonna ask for other signs and symptoms that they might not have thought about. For example, have they had any weight loss, any chest pain? So you're gonna, you don't necessarily ask all of these questions because that would be extensive and dumb, but you're gonna, ask about things based on your knowledge of your differential that you have in your head. Okay, so like I said, um, if they've had some unintentional weight loss, then you obviously want to ask about other things like fever, chills, and night sweats, which are, uh, you know, might lead you to cancer versus something else. Um, so back to this case for, for a brief second. So we know this guy has a history of uh, COPD. He's in the ER. He's short of breath physical exam shows that he's in moderate distress, he's, he's uh, breathing fast, he's using some of the muscles required um, when, when he's having trouble breathing, and uh, some wheezing is heard when you listen. Okay, so I kind of just did that to, to get a, a nice overview of what a history would be like. So you're going to have the chief complaint, you're going to have an HPI which goes over everything he talked about, you're going to ask a little more things, uh, such as is he having any... Uh, fever, is he coughing up blood, anything like that. So he's not going to necessarily tell you unless he's really worried about it, but he might realize that, you know, actually, yeah, I, I have uh, lost 15 pounds in a, in a few months. You're going to ask how much he smokes, COPD, so most likely he's, he's going to be a smoker. Ask about other things like um, alcohol and intravenous drug abuse. You're going to ask about medication, is he taking it? He might not be, especially because he's having an acute exacerbation at this point. You're gonna ask about any other medical history, drug allergies, uh, family history, and surgical history. Okay, so the, this case isn't for you to study or memorize, it's just to show you kind of the, the process of going through all this. So now that you've done all that, you're gonna do a physical exam. And once again, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but there, there is a, a list um, of things you wanna talk about. You're not always gonna do all these. Most of the time, especially in a family med office or even an emergency room, you're gonna look for and, and examine the parts of the physical exam that are relevant to the patient's symptoms. Okay, so vital signs are, is you're always gonna do. You're gonna look over the patient to see um, how much distress they're in. Are, are they complaining but they don't look like they're in any distress? Um, you're gonna check the ears, eyes, nose, throat the neck, the, the chest wall, and the heart, lungs, the abdomen, any musculoskeletal pain or, or um, 
changes the skin and neurologic. If you want to go through and Google some of these words, you can, but at this point, it's not worth it. Um, we just want to give you an idea so when you go over a case in the small group that you'll be able to say, yeah, I think, you know, arthritis, we should probably focus on things like the musculoskeletal system as well as vital signs like we talked about before. If you're listening to this after my arthritis talk, you're going to know that certain types of arthritis have, have weight loss and other systemic symptoms that you, that you won't find in, in regular osteoarthritis. Okay, so just things to keep in mind. So that's it. So a, a good summary of what you're going to do every time you see a patient, especially if it's a new patient, you're going to figure out what their chief complaint is and sift through. Um, if they have multiple complaints, you're going to get a good history um, going through their, sim their, their uh, symptoms now, their, their review of systems that you're going to ask about, past medical and surgical histories, social medicines that they're on, allergies, family history, and then do a physical exam. So I believe that's it. Thank you.